in this short little video on how to use R to do linear regression and correlation. Now note that at times we may be faced with examining the relationship between two quantitative variables. Not the variables themselves, but their relationship. Correlation and linear regression are suited for doing this. And in this video, we see how to perform correlation analysis and linear regression using R. Now the first thing, as always, is to import our data. Notice we've got the source, loads in a lot of helpful functions. SG is going to be our stats grade data set as usual, and we'll at attach it. Notice over here on the left, it's thinking, it's going through its chores, it's working, no errors. We are going to be examining the relationship between GPA and grade. Since we are going to be examining that relationship, the first thing we should do is plot it. Scatter plot. The function is plot, grade, tilde, GPA, and we get something that's rather utilitarian. Now we can spiffy that up a bit. There's a lot here not that important to know what. If you care, this is probably the most interesting par part. This is the symbol for male. This is the symbol for female. They're Unicode points. The slash U indicates that what follows will be a Unicode code. We'll run that. i got to remember it's, it's control R. So there's our plot. Entry point, grade point average, grade earned, student gender. Looks like females are higher than males, and it looks like there's a positive correlation, although I'm not exactly sure it's a strongly positive correlation. But it does seem to be that there is a positive correlation. I'm going to minimize that. To determine the actual correlation, we'll do core.test. Remember back to 1a, we did core.test. Here we're doing it, and we actually now understand more of what information it's giving. The sample correlation, which we knew back in 1a, is 0.335581. Here's the p-value. We now know what a p-value is. This is a test of the null hypothesis that the correlation is 0. Remember the word null means 0. Null hypothesis is a hypothesis of zeroness. Here, since p is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis, conclude that the relationship is not zero. In other words, conclude that there is a relationship between these two variables. Here's a 95% confidence interval. We are 95% confident that the correlation between grade and GPA is between 0.15 and 0.50. 0.15 is pretty weak. 0.50 is moderate. In the social sciences, we may consider that a little strong. In the hard sciences, we consider a correlation of 0.5 being very weak. So again, it all depends upon your discipline. But notice, we went back to something we did in 1A, and we can look at it with new eyes and understand more of what information is being given. And I always encourage that. Go back, look what we've done in the past, and see what we now know about it. So we know that there's a strong there is a correlation, a statistically significant correlation between these two variables. Since GPA is the initial GPA in the class and grade is a grade earned in the class, GPA happens before the grade. Therefore, it would make sense that the GPA was the independent variable and the grade was the dependent variable. So to perform linear regression in R, we can use the LM function. In the parentheses after LM is the dependent variable, followed by a tilde followed by an independent variable. This formula is the same type of formula that we used back in analysis of variance, back in the t-tests, the Wilcoxon test, the Krusko-Wallis test, the fligner colleen test. It's always dependent variable, tilde, independent variable. Here the function is LM. We run this, it comes back with a lot of information. Most of that information is not printed out. So we save it in a variable. Now we could call this variable just about anything we want. We could call this Bob. I'm going to call it mod. Mod for model. So 
I run it, Control R over here on the left, nothing's really changed. It just echoed it back. But mod now contains a lot of information. To see some of the information that mod contains, we'll do a summary of mod. Now, lots of information here. Gives us the information on the formula that we entered, information on the residuals, the five number summary. Well, we actually know the mean of the residuals is equal to zero. Gives us the regression table. This regression table is important. 8.4 is B1. It is the ordinary least squares estimate of beta 1. It is the estimated effect or the estimated slope. The intercept 46.415 is B0. It is the OLS estimate of beta 0. It is the value of y when the value of x is 0. Standard errors, t values. t values are going to be the estimate divided by the standard error. p values can be based on that t value on n minus 2 degrees of freedom. n minus 2 degrees of freedom. And it's 2 degrees minus the 2 because you've got two parameters you're estimating. In all reality, that intercept is rarely interesting from a scientific standpoint. It's almost always going to be the slope that we find interesting. Slope is less than alpha, or the p-value on the slope is less than alpha. That means that this slope is statistically different from zero, which means that there is an effect of GPA on grade. Now, when I say that there's an effect of GPA on grade, we're talking about it from a statistical or correlative standpoint. We're not saying that GPA causes grade to change. Statistics is not about causality. It's about correlation. Your science is about the causality. Your statistics only about the correlation. Now there's one thing missing here and that's a confidence interval. We can get the confidence interval on the parameters by using the function conf int no dots, and we're going to operate it on the model. So we're 95% confident that the true effect of GPA on grade is between 3.68 and 13.16. In other words, for every one increase in GPA, we're 95% certain that the person's grade will go up by 3.68 to 13.16 points, with an average of 8.42. This p-value down here corresponds to the p-value for the entire model. In fact, this paragraph down here is all about the model statistics. Since this p-value is less than alpha, we know that the model does tell us something about the grade. It does, allow, it does explain a little bit about the grade, the dependent variable. All right, that was kind of nice. Let's bring up the graphic again. That explains the slope, where the slope of the line of best fit here is going to be 8.42. But there does still seem to be a significant difference between females and males. Females tend to be higher than males. How can we model that? Well, we just add gender as another independent variable. So originally it was mod is LM is grade squiggle GPA. Now it's mod G. I'm going to call it mod G because I'm including the gender variable. LM grade squiggle GPA times gender. Now we run that, and again, nothing happens. We have to do a summary. We get a lot of information. We can also do a confit, and we will in a few moments. The summary of mod G gives us the formula back, gives us information on the residuals, gives us the regression table. According to the regression table, GPA is still statistically significant. There is no significant difference between male and female, especially when you're, con and there is no difference, statistically significant difference in gender for the slope. So GPA colon gender male is the differential in the slope. Gender male is the differential in the intercept. 
neither of those two are statistically significant so really this this mod G is not an appropriate model even though the p-value for the entire model is less than alpha the model as a the model is not the best model out there this just means that the model explains something about grade it doesn't tell us that this model is a good model the fact that we have an interaction term that is not statistically significant that is not statistically significant tells us that we probably should drop this level but learning how to do that will be stat 4043 applied linear regression and again if you are an observational scientist you may want to take that class and back here we can get confidence intervals on the parameter estimates of mod g notice that the confidence interval for differential effect of GPA by gender contains zero. P-values greater than alpha, those two statements are going to be the same. The differential effect of gender on the intercept also contains zero. It's also P-values greater than alpha. And that's it. There is more to linear regression. There's a lot more to linear regression, but we've only got a finite amount of time in the course, in any course, and we just don't have the time to dedicate to regression or to ANOVA or to categorical analysis or to any of these topics that we would really like to. So this is where we'll stop with linear regression. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was very helpful. I'll talk to you later.